So it's been quite a long time since I've last reviewed an IKEA LED bulb, but today I'm back and I'm back with the all new IKEA Trad Free LED Smart Wireless Dimming Kit. We're going to take a quick first look at it, we're going to set it up, and in the end we're going to compare it against the king of the market, the Philips Hue. So let's start with prices and specifications. The Trad Free LED dimmer kit retails for $19.99 and gives you the dimmer and a light bulb while the Philips Hue White uh, dimming kit retails for $39.99 which is about twice as much and also gives you uh, a single bulb and a remote control. Now not only the trad free kit is cheaper but even if we look at the single price of a bulb the trad free retails for just 9.99 I, I remember years ago when i could buy a 1000 lumen dumb bulb for this kind for this price here and that was insane nowadays i can get a 9.99 bulb that is also um, enabled with wireless connectivity even if we look at the philips bulb it's 2185 so there's a big difference uh, you can get the entire trad free kit for the same price of this bulb here which without a remote or a bridge can do pretty much nothing even if we look at the performance the philips u are rated at 806 lumens while the trad free are 1000 lumen bulbs and they're both white only warm white only of course you can step it up a notch the Philips offers the uh, Hue White Ambience, which are both cold and warm white, while the Trad Free offers 800 lumens bulbs that are also both warm and cold white. So let's uh, crack this package open and uh, let's set it up. All right, so let's unbox it and see what we get inside. So it looks like we have the light bulb, the dimming kit, the magnet for holding it, and a uh, CR2032 battery. We also get some instructions, lots of them actually. Wow, it's quite a lot of paper. I think they actually give you one for the bulb and yeah, one for the, um, for the little dimmer puck. But uh, we don't need them, I don't think so. So let's put this aside. So, pretty terrible unboxing experience, huh? So this is the bulb, um, feels kinda hefty, that's not that bad, but what, what I'm interested in is this remote here. So um, when I first saw it, it, it was like mind-blowing. It's kinda like a volume knob, so you just twist it, you just turn it and it controls the light in that way, so there are no buttons to press, it's a lot more natural. So that's, it, it was super cool. Um, so let's uh, pop the battery in. So we also have the uh, some adhesive here and the uh, magnetic holder. So that's kind of nice. So let's just try and open it up. There we go. So this is the circuit board. Let me just get a screwdriver to get to pop off the this thing here, it's nice. It's uh, the board. The, the board is actually self-contained in this uh, plastic enclosure here. We also have a pairing button right there. Lots of uh, things written on it, and uh, the battery old and the battery holder. Yeah, it sits right here. So let's pop in a battery. It doesn't tell you the polarity actually, so I'm not sure. I think it goes in like this. There we go. Now there's a red LED that just turned on. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know what it means. I don't think that I need to pair it to the bulb, um, but we'll see. Uh, you can also see the, the LED through the, through the casing, so that's kind of nice. So let's pop the bulb to the holder. There we go. Let's turn it on. And we got light. So let's see doesn't do a thing so I think it needs to be paired actually so that's kind of sucks I'll just pop it open let's see 
Don't get anything? I think I may have to read the manual, so I'll be I'll be back in a second. Uh, actually, it looks like I don't need to read the manual. I've just left it sitting here for a couple of seconds, and uh, it's not working. So uh, that 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 is great. So the the ability to control it just by turning it is, I think it, it's it's the best way to do it. So if you do it quickly, it just immediately turns on or turns off just like a switch so you just do on off but if you do it gradually you can then start dimming the bulb so th that's really great so th this is very intuitive so I, I really like how it's working so next up uh, we're gonna check the performance of the bulb so we'll start with uh, a flicker test so here's the bulb, uh, in front of it is a solar panel which is connected to my oscilloscope so we can see uh, if it flickers. So I'm going to start turning it on, you can see, the. so that's it on and there's pretty much no flicker, so that's pretty good. So of course if I increase the intensity, this is, this is DC, so of course it, it increases, but if we uh, get it to AC couple so there is no difference so this bulb here has no flicker so that, that's great so let's do a flicker test for the uh, Philips Hue White same setup bulb solar panel hooked up to my oscilloscope with the same settings unfortunately I don't have a remote so I'm going to use the iPad app so let's uh, turn the bulb on there we go and I can see a little bit of flicker, but it's it's not really all that noticeable in real life. But the bulb is up to max, so let's just dim it down. Whoops. Let's just dim it down. And now it goes pretty much crazy, so there's now a lot of flicker with this bulb here. So if we zoom in and AC couple it. Yeah, there's a lot of flicker, so because of course it's using pulse wave modulation, so that's pretty much to be expected but um, the key is actually pretty good because it has no flicker no flicker across the entire range so another point for the IKEA next up is the heat test so I've got both bulbs turned on at max so this is the Philips this is the IKEA I'm gonna let them sit here for uh, about half an hour maybe an hour or so and then uh, measure the temperatures of course, the IKEA is a 12 watt bulb, while the Philips is an 8 watt, so there will be a difference. Um, I'm also using an open uh, fixture, so that's ideal for LED bulbs. There's plenty of airflow to cool them. So I'll let them uh, cook and uh, I'll report back. So I've left the bulbs on for uh, about an hour and a half. So let's check the, the temperatures. So I've got a thermal camera here. So this is the IKEA, it's buying the 85, 86, and the Philips is approximately, yeah, 70, I, oh, I need to be calibrated, there we go, it's 76, uh, we can call it 80, so yeah, of course the, and this is more like 85, um, so yeah, of course the, the Philips runs cooler, of course one it's an 8 watt, the other one it's uh, 12 and a half, so that was uh, to be expected. I guess it's now time to draw a conclusion, and what a hard conclusion is, because I've been really impressed by the um, IKEA Trad Free. The performance is great, the price is exceptional, but the only thing that it lacks is integration with third-party applications or services, something that the uh, Philips Hue has, and it's actually uh, has a lot of them. You get full if this then that integration, you get integration with third-party vendors, uh, you can control it via Siri or Google Home, which is something that IKEA has announced it will do on their bulbs too, but it will come later this year as of making this video. But for the, considering the price, I think 
the trad free is still worth the purchase. Of course, if you already have Philips Hue, it doesn't really make sense because you cannot mix the two together. It would be nice if you could mix and match trad free bulbs with controllers, maybe with the Hue bridge or Hue color lamps if you need to. But unfortunately, you can't, and I think that Philips uh, blocked this on purpose, or maybe IKEA is using a different standard now, I don't recall. But if you want to get started in smart lightning, the trad free is a great way to go. And with that, thanks for watching.